Hi and welcome to this Instamask tutorial for Photoshop CC. The Instamask panel is laid out in a very logical way. We have four different sections. So we have a top section here, which we'll talk about later. We have this second section here, the buttons in which generate our luminosity masks. So usually one of the first steps when we're using Instamask is to create any of our masks from any of the buttons in here. The third section allows us to adapt or alter our Instamask. So we can use sliders or we can refine the mask or blur the mask or we can add or subtract masks, which again is something I'll show you later on. And the final section is how we apply our Instamask. So let me show you a very basic way of using Instamask. So I have two layers here. I have a darker layer and a brighter layer. And I want to put the sky and the water from the darker layer into this brighter exposure. So I want to keep the darker areas of this brighter exposure visible, but I just want to take the sky and the water and put it into this brighter exposure. So I can do that by first making this darker exposure invisible. So I can press hide layer. Now I can create a luminosity mask. So I want to select the highlights or target the highlights. So I press the brights one section. So B stands for brights, D darks, M midtones. Now brights one is a very general mask, whereas brights five, for example, is a more specific targeted mask. But since we want to select most of the sky and the water, we're better off using a more general mask like brights one. So let's say we're happy with this mask. Now we can go down and alter our mask so we can make it a little bit more contrasting if we wanted. So I can bring up the midtones or the shadows and bring along the highlights. So it's a more contrasting mask. Now, when you're happy with the mask, we can simply select the layer we want to apply the mask to, and then we can press this button here, apply. And now we've blended our two exposures. Now I'm going to do this again, but show you a slight alteration to this. So I'm going to delete the mask we just created. I'm going to hide that dark exposure again, and then I'm going to create a bright luminosity mask. And again, I'm just going to create a little bit of contrast. Now, since we're bringing through the sky and the water, you can see the water is actually quite gray here. So it's not fully selecting all the water in the darker exposure. So if we want to do that, we can actually edit the mask directly on the mask right now and then apply it. So for example, I can choose WH at the bottom here, which means a white brush, or you can choose a black brush, but I'm going to choose a white brush. I'm going to press LA, which means large, and then I'm going to paint directly on the mask. And you see we're altering the mask. And if I'm happy with that, I can again choose the layer I wish to apply the mask to, and then I can press apply. And there you go. Now we've blended the exposures and we've brought through all of the water from the darker exposure into the brighter exposure. Now, if I make this mask invisible, you can see the buildings become darker. And if I make it visible again, we've brightened up those buildings. So those are the first simple steps to using exposure blending in Instamask. Now let's go through what each of the buttons mean. So I'm going to delete this mask again and make that layer invisible and I'm going to press brights one. Now CRGB allows us when we have a mask created to see the full color image on our screen. And if we click see mask, we can see Instamask again. So we need Instamask to be created and to exist in order to use these buttons. Align is something we do when maybe we've shot our images without a tripod and they're not fully aligned. So we can press align and that will use Photoshop's inbuilt auto align function to align the layers. Delete IM will delete the Instamask. Now white M and black M will allow us to create white or black masks on our layers. So if we click on blended, let's say, and I can press white M, it creates a white mask, or black M, it creates a black mask. So you don't need to delete the mask in order to apply these masks first. Now, show layer and hide layer. Well, you've already seen me use hide layer, but show layer makes the layer visible again. Hide makes it invisible. So we can oscillate between these two. Hide ants is when we, if we press the select button, you can see we've created a selection here. If we hide ants, this makes the selection invisible, but the selection is still active. So if I create a mask by pressing this add a mask button, you'll see we've created a mask on that layer and that will be the selection that we just had. However, let's create a luminosity mask again. If I press select again, if we press deselect, 
this will completely deselect that selection so it's not active anymore. Now Adobe Camera Raw ACR, this only works if you open your images via Adobe Camera Raw first, then you hold down shift and when you open the images, you'll see that open images button becomes open objects and you open the images as smart objects in Photoshop. We can't simply use a flat rasterized layer, right click and press convert to smart object. That won't work. It has to be an image which has been opened in Adobe Camera Raw first. And then we can press ACR and you'll see Adobe Camera Raw opens up. And undo will simply undo whatever step you took last time. So if I create a curves layer, I can then open up Instamask and just press undo. That's the same function that we have in the Riot Pro Hub. Now let's look at generating the masks. Well, we have something called Lumen here, and this is a point and click way of creating masks. So we can simply put our eyedropper on our screen, choose an area that we want to select. So I say this area and press OK. And now we've created a mask targeting those areas, that area of brightness. We can expand that selection by pressing the plus button. This will work five times and it'll make the selection more general. And then we can press the minus button and this will make a more restrictive selection. So you see our selection is becoming much smaller, much more restrictive. And now it's nothing, just black. Now color does the same thing, but instead of luminosity, we are making our selections purely by color. So if I select this area here and press OK, we've just selected any areas that have a roughly similar color. Now, if we press the plus button and the minus button, that will give us the same results as the lumen plus or minus button. So it makes a more general or more restrictive mask. Now, if you want a more accurate way of doing this, we can simply press manual. And now we have the color range picker that comes up. Now, if you don't see a black and white screen like this, you can go down to selection preview and it might say none on yours and simply press grayscale. And now we can choose any area that we want to select. And this is what the mask will look like. And we can make that more general. So we're selecting more colors or more similar colors. And we can press this plus button and we can add colors to the selection. So we can really do anything we want in terms of making selection via color. And when you're happy, simply press OK. Now I'm going to delete this mask and show you what a saturation mask looks like. So a saturation mask will essentially make a selection of the most saturated colors of our image. And then we can obviously have finer control over those saturated areas. Now, if you're curious about how this works and you want to see more information on it, you'll see a tutorial pop up right now on this video in the top right hand corner. And this will take you to a video I recently created on saturation masks. But to create that in Instamask, we simply press saturation mask. And here we have our saturation layer. And of course, we can adjust that as we see fit. And if we want, we can apply this to, let's say, a saturation or hue layer. And we can obviously adjust the colors as we see fit. And you see, we're not affecting all of the colors. In fact, we're not affecting any of the blues in the image. We're just affecting those stronger pinks in the sky. So if you want to increase the color of the sky, this is a great way to do it with this particular image. So moving on in Instamask, we also have an edge mask. And an edge mask will allow us to sharpen our image without any edges. So if we press edge mask, you'll see we've now created a mask which is excluding edges. So those are the black bits. So I want to make that mask a little bit more contrasting. So we want to make those black bigger edges more apparent but we want to exclude the smaller edges. So if you're happy with that, we can press OK. And now we want to blur the edges just to make them a little bit softer. We don't want any extreme edging. So I'm going to go to 4.6. And when that's done, if we want, we can still strengthen the edges by bringing up the midtones or the shadow sliders. And now, if we're happy, we simply press something like Sharpen and we can sharpen our image. Now I'm going to make this really extreme so you can see what the edge mask has done for us. So I'm going to make it 8.5. It's really strong and I'm going to zoom in and you should still see some edging along here because it's really crazy sharpening. But if I make this mask invisible, so I disable the layer mask, you see how strong the edging becomes? So let's look at this area here. So this is with the mask disabled and that's with the mask enabled. So we're removing 
the edging that often comes with over sharpening. So I'm going to delete that layer. And as I mentioned before, we have our bright masks, our dark masks, and our mid-tone masks. But we also have more masks to choose from because we have RGB masks. And if we click on this RGB button, our RGB masks panel appears. So I can create luminosity masks based on the individual channels along here, which you see are all represented slightly differently. So if I choose a brights one from the reds channel, that's going to look different to the brights one from the greens channel. You see the foreground's a little bit darker with the greens channel. And with the blue channel, again the foreground's a little bit darker. So the red channel for brights one doesn't give us the best selection of the sky separate from the foreground. But if we went to the blue channel brights one, we have a nice white sky and our foreground is a little bit darker. And the great thing about this is these RGB masks are also Insta masks. So we can alter them any way we want, just like we did with the previous masks. Now, let me show you again how this is quite useful. I'm going to leave that up and go to a different image. So we've got an image of Nugget Point here. And it's a nice Milky Way shot. And if I want to make a selection just of the stars, I can press, let's say, Brights 4 or even Brights 3. Now, the stars are quite bright there, but not fantastic. If I try the red channel brights 3, uh, that's a medium improvement, but nothing special. If I go to the green channel, it's much brighter, much better selection of the stars. And if I go to the blue channel, it's a fantastic selection of the stars. So I can create a curves layer here by pressing the curves button. And now I can simply bring up the curve and there we go. We're targeting just the stars. And by the way, if you want to bring back Instamask, if it's closed, we can simply press Instamask. So the RGB masks work exactly the same way as the masks in your Luminosity Mask section in Instamask. There's no difference, they're just on a different panel. Now I want to show you range masks. These are the same as Luminosity Masks, but they give you some other options that you might be interested in. So if we press Bright, we can create a Bright Luminosity Mask and we have our color range again popping up, but this time we're affecting only our highlights. And we can change the range of our mask. So remember, we don't want the foreground to be selected. So I can bring the range all the way to 255. And I can bring down the fuzziness. And you see, we're selecting the sky without selecting much of the foreground. So you see, we do get some extra options by using the range masks. Now press OK, and there's our range mask there. Or we can create darks range masks, which does the opposite. And this, of course, allows us to select our shadows and we can bring up the fuzziness or the range. So we've got lots of different options in terms of generating luminosity masks. Now for tone masks, if we press R, you see we haven't got a mask on our Insta mask layer. But you'll see we have generated a mask because we have a black and white image here on the screen. And you press G and each time there's a subtle change in what you see. Now we can't actually use these masks until we've pressed OK. So once we press OK, we now create the mask. Or if we don't want to create the mask, we can simply press X. Now all will allow us, if we press all, we can open up this layer here. And now we have this option to move these sliders. And you see, we can darken or brighten certain areas. So we get lots of control over the mask that we're creating. Now this isn't always the cleanest option because it tends to create some banding if we're too excessive on how we change the properties. And again, when you're finished, simply press OK. So now I'm going to open up Instamask and close the RGB masks. As you can see, creating masks is really easy in Instamask. And now let's talk about how we can refine or change our masks. Well, refining mask isn't something that I use particularly often, but it's an option that you might find interesting. We can smooth out our selection. We can increase the contrast of our selection quite significantly. And we can do all sorts of changes. But again, this isn't something that I usually would do, but some people might find it very useful. Another option is to blur your mask. And sometimes people do this to stop any sort of edging uh, when exposure blending. But I already show you how to do that in the premium course that comes with Raya Pro if you purchased it. And now we're going to look at how we can add or subtract masks. Now, if you're interested in this in a real workflow, 
you'll see a link pop up in the top right hand corner of this video and this will take you to a full workflow that I did using the old version of Instamask. But if you watch that, roughly halfway through or maybe towards the, the last three quarters of the video, you'll see how I subtract masks to make a very fine selection. But I'm going to show you how to do that now. So let's say we're looking at this image of Dubai and we want to make a selection just of the yellows and the blues in our image. Now we can do this with any mask. We can combine bright masks, dark masks, mid-tone masks, and we can combine them, subtract them from any other mask from these channels. But I'm just going to show you a way to do it with colors. So I can press this color button here and I can choose a color in the foreground. So let's say yellow and I can press OK. So now we've created a mask which is targeting the yellows. So if I just increase that selection, you can see we're making a more general selection of the yellows. Now I can press the combi button and this will save our selection here on a layer called original. Now I want to make a selection of the blues. So I click on color and choose the blues up here and press OK. So now I've made a selection of the blues. Here I want to add this blue selection to this yellow selection. So I want to create a mask that has both the yellow and the blue selection. To do that, I simply press add. And now we have a selection of our blues and our yellows. Now let's say I wanted to subtract the yellows from this selection again. Well, again, I can press combi, then I can press color and I can choose the yellows and I'm going to make another more general selection. So I'm going to keep pressing this until it's selected most of the yellows that it can. And then this time I'm going to press subtract. And there we've subtracted the yellows from the selection. Now this comes in handy when it comes to more advanced exposure blending or when we want to make really advanced selections to target specific areas so that we can make contrast changes or color adjustments without affecting other areas. And as I mentioned in that video in the link in the top right hand corner, that will show you a great example of how this can work. So now you have a good understanding of how the functions work for generating masks and altering those masks. Let's look at the bottom buttons here that shows how to apply our mask. Most of them are pretty straightforward, but please note you can't use them unless we have an Insta mask created. So if I press saturation hue, you see we get this error. So I need to instead create a bright layer. So now we have an Insta mask and then I can press saturation hue and that creates a hue saturation layer. So we can saturate or desaturate that selection. Now, all of these buttons, so you see photo filter, vibrance, detail, curves, all of these ones are exactly the same in that they add a new layer which allows us to adjust something within the image. And it's all pretty straightforward. So noise is noise removal, curves is a curves layer, and detail is a detail enhancer. DB is dodge and burn. So if you want to dodge and burn, we can just press Let's say brights one again, and we can press DB, and it creates a 50% gray layer. And with that, we can choose, let's say, a black brush, and we're affecting the highlights here. We'll choose a large brush of about 50% opacity, and you see we can darken the image. So by pressing black, by choosing a black brush, we are burning that area. If we choose a white brush, we are dodging that area instead and it won't affect the darker parts of the image because that's not included in the mask. Now let's look at some other options here. If I create a mask, and I don't know if this mask is going to work on the image or not, if it's been edited correctly, I can test it on the image before I apply it. I can click on the image I want to apply it to and press test. And if this layer is invisible, we can press show layer and now it becomes visible and we can see if the mask works. If it doesn't work, we can press end test. If it does work, we can press apply. So in this example, I'm going to press end test. And you see everything goes back to normal. We have our Insta mask again and our layer no longer has a mask. Now live allows us to edit in split screen. So if I press live, we can now see both of our images on the big screen here. And I can zoom out to see what they look like. And this means I can make changes or I can apply the mask or do anything I want and I can see how it's affecting the full image. And to get out of this, all we need to do is close that image. Another option in Instamask is if we just want to save our selection because maybe it will be useful later on down the line. Then we can just press this save button 
and that saves our mask. And finally, if you want to manually paint our masks, I'm going to make this invisible. I'm going to delete this mask and I'm going to create a bright luminosity mask. Now I want to paint this in as a selection, so a traditional way of using luminosity masks. So to do that, I can simply press the select button here. And now we have this selection. Now I can create a black mask on my Instamask layer. I can make it visible. I can press hide ants to hide the marching ants. Then I can choose a white paintbrush and I can just start painting in that selection. See, and we can paint it in the foreground here. And the great thing about manually painting in selections is that we can go over it a couple of times to strengthen the effect. So we create a nice natural blend. And there we have a naturally blended scene. So that is how we use Instamask. Now the buttons down the bottom are fairly straightforward. This is a white brush, a black brush, small, large, and this will increase the brush size by 250, and this will decrease the brush size by 250. And that's it. Obviously this is a really advanced tool, and all I've done is shown you the functions of each of the buttons. To really learn how to use it, you have to practice more, and watch the official Raya Pro course.